Put it there. Some too. I have another one. Okay, go. <laughs> okay, uh, so one of my early NRC patients, I met at a talk I did, came in and went through the complete four-day process, including day four, husband comes in. And this woman had good responses to the test, although she wasn't able to schedule them close together, and so she would have a relief of symptoms and they would come back. But anyway, day four, husband comes in and goes through all of the day four scripting, including drawing out from the husband what the wife's problems are creating for him, explaining how her getting well will solve one of his major problems, and then um, presented the care plan and the finances. And they gave a, what I thought was a very reasonable reason for needing to, to do some further investigation. She uh, needed to go to her employer and ask about taking time off from work. So she, um, she gets a certain amount of time for medical leave, and she was right on the cusp of having taken too much. And so they left in order for her to check that out, and they were going to call back, and they never called back. And which really surprised me because she seemed so interested. She had a good outcome on the test, and she seemed ready to go. And yet, this was a week and a half ago. And all next week, all last week, we were expecting them to call, and they didn't. My friend, this person, called a couple times. And so I'm just kind of befuddled at what might have happened. And I'm considering calling her myself. But I kind of feel that if I do, you know, I can only do that about once. I don't want to chase after her, but I want to see if there's anything she needs clarified. You can call her, and you are correct, that you're not going to be able to do it more than once because then it'll be like you're chasing after her, and it'll sound like you're needy. And that's the worst thing you could ever do. But more importantly, to I need to ask you is when the husband was in there, what were his behaviors or his facial expressions or... What did he give off as far as um, body language? He was sitting with his arms by his side and his legs open, so he, he wasn't closed in terms of body language. And his most uh, energetic expression or communication was, yeah, her problem really creates problems for me. Now, and when he said that, did you ask him... Do you want her fixed? It did not ask in that direct of a way. Um, I had her tell him how their life would be better if she was well, and she did. But I didn't ask him, do you want her fixed? That's what you've got to find. You've got to find out if, does that husband want that, that spouse well? And do they feel like there is truly help? Do they see that this could be the solution? Because just like your patient, that spouse has gone through the same amount of, you know, she can be helped and now she can't be helped. We did all these tests and she can't be helped. So you've got to make sure that he's on, the, on board and on the same page. And the only thing that I can think of is she doesn't call you back. There's only there's only one of a couple things that could happen. It's either the spouse wasn't on the same page, and so the spouse decided to tell her that they're not going to do it and didn't want to do it in front of you, or they went and consulted some other person, and the person said, no way, there's no way that that would work. they don't come back and that's why they don't call and they can't confront you. They, they have some big fear that you're going to be upset or you're going to be angry or they let you down or something of that aspect so they don't confront you and they just walk out the door. If, if that is the case, um, could you like send them some testimonials? of people who have responded well to the uh, similar treatment. You can. Similar case. You can, but when they, once they walk out of your office and they get what they call third-party
not be meaning to get bad data or somebody tell them not to come see you. It's very hard to regain them back into your practice. You could do it if you were face to face with them, absolutely. But if, if they walk out of your practice and an MD says, don't you dare do that because it'll make the condition worse, it doesn't matter how much data you send them. If they believe that MD, you're kind of in a sinking battle to some degree. Because the material will become unreal to them. Oh, yeah, that works for that person, but it won't work for me because my MD said it won't work for me. And the problem with that is if, if you had that person sitting in front of you, you could address it. You could handle it, and you could get that person to a different viewpoint than that one. So when you just send them information in the mail, it's not going to change that thought process if they came into your practice and then they left and then the MD said, no, don't do that. What you're working towards on your day one is being the opinion leader of that patient. And when you become the opinion leader, then it doesn't matter what the MD says, the patient will still come see you. But if you deliver your consult in a form or a fashion where you're trying to be friends with them or you're trying to have them like you so they can get under care, that's the wrong aspect to deliver under because now you're like their friend, you're not an opinion leader. You really want to deliver in an aspect that penetrates their thoughts, penetrates their actions, so that you can truly change and become the opinion leader of that person. When you stimulate that person and you get that person to have aha moments, so you get them to have, you know, a change in thought process, you're now their opinion leader because you're the one that got them to see the light. And that makes all the difference in the world. All right, so are there any other questions that I can address? I have another one, Dr. Shiro. Uh-huh. Uh, so, what, um, what those percent should we be realistically shooting for with these patients? Well, uh, I, I always like people at 75 and 80 percent. Awesome. Yeah. And there's going to be 20 percent of them that you can't help. But now you do have to realize that if you bring in 10 people off of welfare, your closure rate is going to be very skewed that month because there's, it's very hard to help welfare patients. Yes. Yeah. So that's another thing that you have to look at is, is your marketing pulling in people that are not on welfare. This is not related to the four day, but um, it'd be great if we could have a teleconference focusing on uh, marketing. I'm sure Colette will make note of that. And Absolutely. Figure something out how to see if we can make that happen. Dr. Tashera, are you a senior client? No, I, I'm with uh, an organization named HealthSource, a national chiropractic franchise. Uh, Dr. Tom Schatz started HealthSource, and he was a, a senior client for a while. And uh, I recognize some of what he teaches in HealthSource as being similar to what is present in the four-day. But I'm not a senior client, per se. Now, most, most consultants, I, I don't think I've met a consultant that wasn't a senior client first. <laughs> Truthfully, he's been, he's, he's, he's been a consultant for 25 years, and they all kind of try to take off of him and arrange their stuff and make it work, and that's probably why you see some similarities. Yeah. But, yeah, we'll look into seeing if we can do a teleconference as far as Mark is concerned. Maybe find out the doctors who have the most successful marketing actions and what they're doing and maybe have them share. Yes. Any other questions as far as the patients are concerned? Are there any other issues that I should address? There isn't anything at the moment. I 
I can think of. Um, this was very thorough, and, and believe me, I want to actually transcribe these pearls of wisdom. So. All right. Well, do any of you have any other questions that I can help you with? Well, then, Colette, are you okay if we end off here? Absolutely. That would be great, Christina. All right. But you guys, go make it happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, end of phase four questions and answers with Christine.